Hello everybody. I hope you're having a fantastic day. I thought it'd be kind of fun to go through my vintage computer collection, show you what I got, ask you some questions, and just kind of chat about some retro stuff. So let's get started. Now I will be the first to admit that I am very blessed to get to steward a lot of this kind of stuff. So, um, you know, this is not to show off. I'm just very excited about these things. In fact, this was mostly a gift. This is a, an Amiga 2000 that came in a whole bunch of pieces that a good friend uh, gave me and uh, I bought a few things for it but for the most part it was a gift and uh, the Amiga 2000s a big box Amiga and huge numbers of them were destroyed with battery damage and this one happened to be saved before that battery damage happened. Like a lot of the things you'll see in this video, this one's in the middle of restoration. Um, I work a lot, I don't have a ton of time, and this stuff can be pretty dang frustrating. So, um, you know, I do what I can. Uh, it does have the original SCSI hard card, which has some RAM on it. And to be honest, I don't know if that is cache or if that's system RAM or exactly what that does. I know it boots, uh, so that's a good thing. We have, uh, this is a network card for the thing, which I don't know how rare that is, but it's really cool to have an ethernet card for it. Um, this is something I haven't touched since I was in high school. This is a video toaster, which is a uh, was just the video tool of all video tools in the 80s and even into the 90s. I think I used mine through 93, 94, 95, something like that. And it is very, very sweet. Um, the only thing I'm actually missing from the thing is this floppy cover and it looks like that's damaged there. So it is damaged. It doesn't look like it's damaged. I got to figure that part out. I do have this external floppy over here. The uh, cover is a little smaller for it. So I don't know if that can be swapped or not. I do have all the missing pieces in here. I don't think I still need to open them up, but all the little hard drive light and all that stuff is in here. I'm pretty decent about labeling that stuff and hanging on to it. Um, another cool thing I've never actually used, but this is an 8088 CPU card. So basically you can run PC software extremely slowly in the Amiga. And uh, this card, let's see, this is a Genlock card. So I'm guessing it has something to do with video or something like that. So I don't know what I don't know when it comes to the Amiga. So maybe you can enlighten me in the comments. All right, so I'm gonna be real quick, but I wanna give a massive shout out to this video sponsor, PCB Way. It is not an exaggeration to say that these computers would not work without PCB Way. I've got diagnostic cartridges, I've got diagnostic dongles, I have diagnostic adapters, I have things to convert spinning hard disks that are dying at an alarming rate into SD cards and compact flash cards. I've got adapters to replace irreplaceable floppy drives. I have adapters to output put video from these odd formats to HDMI things that we can use. Now I've got prototyping boards that help me speed up my computer. All kinds of stuff like this comes from PCB Way. So I'm going to thank PCB Way for propping up this channel, the maker community as a whole, and the retro community as a whole, because they keep this stuff going. And that is awesome. And next up, we have the Apple and Macintosh stuff. Uh, I am not exactly an Apple fanboy, but I'm learning to appreciate the history and all that kind of stuff. So we'll give you the quick overview and then I'll tell you what this stuff is. The newest member of the family I actually got this week. It was just a good deal on Facebook. It's one of these Blueberry um, Mac G300, I think they're called, but it actually works and came with the clear mouse and all that kind of stuff. So um, I don't exactly have a plan for this, but it was cheap, so I got it. Um, these next two are uh, were basically freebie Mac SEs. This one over here, you can see has like drawings all over the side. And uh, I didn't think there was any chance that I was gonna be able to get either of them to work, but it turns out I was able to get both of them to work. And this one had this crazy uh, 68030 accelerator board in there, which apparently is relatively fast for one of these accelerator boards and because of that it's going to need special software and things like that so i'm kind of in the process of restoring these two i'm taking my time um i'm going to be replacing the hard drives and things like that they both have um unique cards in them and they both have unique software on those cards so i've purposely not powered the cards back up and not powered the hard drives back up because i need to save that data so that i don't lose the drivers for this board because like i can't find them anywhere um, the next one's another one that I repaired. It's an Apple IIc. Um, definitely used one of those in elementary school. And uh, 
this thing, I didn't have any discs for it. And so I'm in the process of um, learning how to transfer things uh, over a serial card and actually write discs by the floppy drive, sending them from a PC. So that's kind of the, my little project right now on that. Um, this next one is an Apple II clone and it is ginormous. It is the uh, Franklin Ace 1000. And uh, I have to do some reefer work on this. And so this is uh, this was a very generous gift. And uh, I'm very excited to play with this. I don't have any cards for it or anything like that. So it's going to be another one of those slow burn projects. And then this was basically a freebie in kind of rough shape. But I, it actually does boot. Um, so I'm not going to mess with it too much. But it does boot up uh, this rough mac book thing and so um maybe power book what they call it i don't know one thing i also want to point out i forgot to mention is this thing is actually permanently attached to the franklin and again i don't know anything about apple so if you know anything about this joystick uh this minco stick thing uh it's got a little looks like an adapter maybe to daisy chain them on the back and uh, if you know anything about this joystick i would love to know some information it looks like a tandy joystick on steroids so uh, that is the extent of both my collection and my knowledge of Apple computers. And next up, we have the Atari collection. Uh, Atari has a soft spot in my heart. I had the original wood grain Atari 2600 as a kid. I actually do still have a wood grain 2600, but this is just the one that was most accessible. This is the 2600 Junior that I modded in a video. I also have this trackball thing that I always wanted as a kid, but never got it. So I think it's kind of fun. Um, the 5200 was one that my friend had, but I never had. Um, I actually have the two controller and the four controller version of it. Um, you know, now it's not that awesome to play. You can do all that stuff on emulation and all that, but it's still kind of fun to have one in the collection. Um, moving down over here to the 8-bit line, this one you've seen in probably a couple of videos. This is the Atari XEGS, the XE game system. And this is an 8-bit Atari, which is compatible with all the 400s and 800s but just basically one of the latest models. Uh, I don't have the light gun that came with it or the original white controllers, and it obviously needs some cleaning up, but it does work. And then over here, speaking of needing some cleaning up, this is the Atari 1040 ST. And normally you would think like, why would I put such an ugly monitor over there? But the reason for that is that this thing actually has that DIN connector round monitor port. And so, um, that is the monitor you need to make this thing run and so uh she may not be pretty but she is rare and so um yeah all this stuff kind of deserves some cleaning up i've honestly not spent very much time on the uh on the 16-bit one so i want to play with that over time i think this deserves a good cleanup and stuff like that so i don't know maybe you guys have some mods you think i should do to it or uh some tips for me so definitely open to that as I was packing up, I remembered that I do have the Atari three and a half and five and a quarter inch drive. I know people hate this drive with a passion. Um, this one looks like it's practically brand new. Uh, this obviously not so much, but uh, I do have those things. Haven't used them yet, but it's on my list. Speaking of floppy drives people hate, I've got a couple of the Commodore 1541s uh, that were slow and expensive and problematic and failure prone, but so many people grew up using these drives and all that comma eight comma one stuff that i never did as a kid um so anyway i've got two of those and i have a relatively ugly commodore 64 that the price was right on so i picked it up i mean obviously i would love to have a nicer cleaner one or whatever but this does work and it works great so um no complaints there then i've got the relatively rare relatively expensive commodore 128 d with the keyboard that has this 25 pin connector on it uh you know that's pretty hard to replace so the commodore 128d can act like a commodore 64 it can act like a uh, commodore 128 i think it can even run cpm um very cool very versatile machine kind of sought after and so i am very blessed to have that and uh finally down here this was a flea market find i believe the commodore tape drive with its uh special little weirdo connector on the back there so uh that is my commodore collection so i don't like complaining about things i don't have and obviously i am beyond spoiled but the one computer that i don't have in my collection that i would really like to have is a commodore pet that was the first computer i ever used in school and just have such fond memories of that computer i'm sure it'd be garbage to use it today but i would love to have a commodore pet all right so this is my actual ibm branded stuff um 
This is an original IBM 5150 that I restored. I think you've seen the motherboard on the channel. Uh, this is the IBM, I think it's 5153 CGA monitor. Um, one of the reasons, I haven't really explained why I keep a lot of this stuff, but I do repair a lot of older things. And so this computer here has CGA. So if I ever need to use CGA graphics, it's uh, right there. So I've got the monitor and everything for it. Now, obviously I can use and usually do use the RGB to HDMI, but that does have a CGA card in it. Uh, moving over here, this is one that I built, and I guess I'll talk about it right now. I've actually started recording a series where I go back and build my dream computer for every year, basically. Um, so as you can tell, I have a whole lot of computers. So uh, this is actually my dream computer for a particular year. Um, if you guys are interested in seeing that stuff, I filmed it. I don't know that I'll actually release it, but if that's something that seems interesting to you, let me know. You know, I don't have a ton of money, but it's like now that I'm an adult and I have the ability to do this kind of stuff, I think it's kind of fun to go back and build my dream computer from 1985 or whatever it is. Um, over here, this was not my dream computer. I had the Tandy 1000, but this is the uh, IBM PC Junior, and I actually repaired this one, replaced the power supply, had some bad chips in it and stuff like that, repaired that. Has this wireless keyboard, which is pretty rare to find with the uh, the IR receiver intact. So I probably won't be keeping this computer forever. Um, not really a dream machine of mine, but it was definitely fun to fix. And then over here, just kind of funny because the only other IBM branded thing I have, but it's the uh, IBM ThinkPad Pentium 3. And the main reason why I got this, um, well, it was 10 bucks at the flea market, but um, it has kind of all the right ports. It's got USB and serial and PS2 and modem and ethernet and all that kind of stuff. And so it's kind of a really nice tween machine for working on other computers because it's got all the right ports and all the stuff that I need. As a kid, nothing quite had my heart like Radio Shack. So I'll give you a breakdown. I've actually got a couple more beyond this one, but uh, Radio Shack was always the love of my childhood. And uh, this is a computer I don't totally love, but it's a 286 uh, Tandy 1000 RX. And one of the cool things about that is when you do have solid state storage in there, it is absolutely silent, which is pretty sweet. This is the Tandy 1100 FD, and it actually works really well. And now that I've replaced the belt, the floppy drive works great. And then below it, we've got the Tandy 102, which is one of those computers you actually see people sell for a lot of money on, or try to sell for a lot of money on Facebook and eBay and stuff like that. They're not worth very much. They're not super useful, but they are classic. Next over here, I've got two Coco uh, 3s, Color Computer 3s. And I've said this before, but I had the Tandy 1000 EX, which is this one with the five and a quarter inch floppy drive. And as I was going to Radio Shack, they were closing out these. And so it was so common for me to find amazing deals on parts and games and stuff like that for the Coco and I never had one and so that always kind of bothered me. Um, I feel like this is my one that fully works. Um, it's got RAM upgrades and things like that. It's got the kind of ugly keyboard. This one, um, it works. The um, Somebody drove a screw through there which was super common on these things. I'll do a repair on that and uh, the keyboards also go bad on these things all the time. So I think what I'm going to do this one has the prettiest keyboard. There's some debate about what keyboard layout people like better. A lot of people like having all the arrow keys right over here for games. Um, so I haven't decided, but I'm going to fix. I have three Coco keyboards and two computers. So I'm going to fix a nice keyboard and put it in here because it's probably the one that I'm going to keep. And then, uh, you know, this one will probably go down the road. Again, this is my Tandy 1000 EX. I did a video on this where I did a RAM upgrade. It has a, uh, a card in here with... 512k of ram and a floppy drive or not floppy a hard drive emulator and a serial port and stuff like that then uh, this was another one i built for my unreleased series about my dream computers um, i did do a video on it i think but um this was a parts and pieces 1000 hx and uh, the idea, is, and that's one thing I want to say, the idea of the series was never to build the highest end model of anything. It was always like, I would have thought this was super cool as a 10 year old in 1987 or whatever it was. So um, anyway, that's my 1000 HX. So I was over there editing and I realized that I never actually said anything about this computer. This, I believe, is actually the fastest Tandy computer ever made. I went through every Radio Shack catalog and stuff like that and tried to find one that was faster. But this has a Intel Overdrive in it. I don't want to give too many details about it. But um, I actually, it came without a power switch on it and uh, I wound up making my own. It was the first thing I ever uh, designed myself to 3D print. But this is a, a Tandy... 
MMPC, and there were some faster computers sold at Radio Shack, but none of them with the actual Tandy name on them. And so this could be pretty interesting. Let me know if you want to see more about this one. Last in the Radio Shack category, um, I won't talk a lot about these because I have a video about them, but these are two uh, TRS-80 Model 4s that were heading for the recycling bin and uh, saved them from there. So this is a 4D and this is a 4 gate array over here. Um, both of them have been upgraded with Gotex and um, Fred's, the hard drive emulators. Uh, this one actually has a couple of bad keys on it. So I'm gonna replace that keyboard. I actually got four of these things out of the trash. None of them worked, I fixed two, um, but I'm probably gonna go ahead and scavenge a keyboard from another one to fix this one. And uh, I'll be getting rid of my parts, but I, the other monitors work and stuff like that. I just need to do some motherboard repairs. So if I can fix all four, I'll fix all four, but if not, I'll pass the other two down the road for parts machines. And I'm probably only keeping one of these total. I don't really need two Model 4s. So I actually grouped these four together because they came from the same person along with an insane amount of other retro stuff that I have not had a chance to feature on the channel yet. Um, I'll start from the right. Um, there were three of these new old stock vertical high resolution monitors called the Genius and they came with their own um, controller cards and stuff like that. They are very, very cool. And I've got video of me unboxing. As I was got this stuff donated, my work picked up a ton. And you guys stopped watching my retro stuff. So I was a little debating if I was going to keep making retro videos. And I still don't know for sure. But these things are very cool. Paper white, like high resolution vertical monitors. Um, this also should have been in there with the Commodore stuff. But this is just a, an absolute treasure. This is a beautiful condition 1702 monitor that still has... The little door those things break off all the time and i use that monitor all the time for doing stuff um this is just a case but it's very cool it's a uh i think it's got a mono like nine inch screen inside of it and uh, i want to build a project out of this i've really been looking for the keyboard that goes in here there's a it's basically a luggable so it's um it's kind of a portable computer case and i would love to find the keyboard but if i can't i might wind up making something for it um, it's got handles and all kinds of stuff like that. And then last but definitely not least, there was not one but two of these very, very cool CPM machines. These are called Zorbas and uh, they are pretty rare machines. I feel like there were like 6,000 of them made or something like that. And this one's in immaculate condition. Like I said, there's actually two of them. And, uh, you know, I'm still learning a lot about CPM and all that, but I've had this thing apart uh, and it is an amazingly well-built machine. And so I'm still learning about writing discs for it and doing all that kind of stuff, but it is so, so cool. And beyond this stuff, uh, this same gentleman also basically loaded up my van with all kinds of fun software, CPM stuff, and uh, this amazing collection of ISA and PCI cards and stuff like that that I root through several times a week to get parts out of like so many things in the shop run because of this awesome donation and I just really appreciate that. All right, I got a couple things out to just show you a few other things I've been working on. Uh, I picked up this ITT Visual Mouse uh, brand new in the box. I did an unboxing on this, but I haven't uh, edited it. It's been like a year, so I don't know if I will. Um, I'm getting rid of these two machines here. These are two uh, 486 machines, I think. Maybe Pentiums, I don't remember, um, but they were just some cheap machines I got. I've got four of these um, TRS-80 Model 2 8-inch floppy drives that I'm kind of tinkering around with, but I'm going to be getting rid of a couple of those as well. Um, I think <laughs> before I make the video, you guys might as well tell me if you have a, a contender for something worse, but I think this might be the worst... Um, home computer in American history as far as usability and stuff like that. The Timex Sinclair, these things were cheap. They were like 99 bucks and they went on sale for like $50. And the rumor has it that um, there was a time the Commodore had a $75 discount for a computer if you traded in your old one. And so a lot of people bought these for the sole purpose of trading them in, which is why there's so many available in the box because uh, people got them and then figured out they were basically difficult to use. Now, Brits, grew up on these things so i want to be careful making fun of them too much but yeah um in america these things were terrible uh, i've got some eight inch discs back here this is kind of funny these are uh, eight inch cleaning discs which is kind of wild um and then we've got just a brand new box of polaroid eight inch discs uh, i've got a couple of these ti 99s that i fixed they're all broken um you know the keyboard's 
just go bad and things like that. The RAM chips go bad stuff, so they were all broken. Then I actually um, got this out just because this computer has actually been kind of a year process where I work on it for a couple hours every couple of months, and I finally just got this one to boot up and work fine. Um, I need to replace this key, and uh, I'll probably never fix the tape drive that's on the front of it, but I do have a Coleco Atom, which is pretty fun. Found it in a barn, actually with the TRS-80 while I was at it with these uh, drives. Down here, I'm not going to get into these too much, but these are, um, I'm in the process, and I've got one more over there on my bench, but I'm in the process of building my dream uh, 286, my dream 386, my dream 486, my dream socket 7, uh, and some other machines. So these these two cases I'm definitely keeping. Um, that one probably won't stay in that case, but anyway, I got some work to do on those and my rack mounts for, uh, these are the ones that I actually use, the retro computers that I use for making floppies and stuff like that. So that is my retro collection. What do you think?